All right, here we are. Dear Gallo, the first session. Who isn't excited about this? I am looking at the questions and going right into it. I got a question from Diana Martinez, directing for the first time. I'm currently working on a screenplay. I want to direct it when I'm ready. I never want to film. Sc I never went to film school, but I did study English literature when I was in college. I'm from Connecticut, not New York or LA. What should I do? Well, this is a you know. It, it, this day and age, it doesn't really matter where you're from, where you're staying. Of course, it's better to be in L.A. because that's where the decisions are made. So you get to be in a place where you have greater access to the uh, film and TV community. There's some great access in New York. There's some great access in uh, Austin. And it's nice to get into one of those areas. But if you have a great screenplay and you can... Uh, send it around to different people uh, in the industry. Uh, you can do that from anywhere. Um, in terms of directing, uh, I, I have a, a thought that it's all about doing uh, more than it is about film school. I love film school. They're good for what they are. Uh, but in your case, it might be great to uh, direct a short based on your screenplay. Uh, it also might be great for you to uh, take that screenplay uh, and find a way to raise money and produce and put it together yourself uh, if you want to direct. Uh, or you can find a director for this first go-around and learn from them while they're directing your screenplay. So, I mean, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. If you're just looking to move, then instead of just trying to go in between, uh, go directly to L.A. If since you're from Connecticut, and that's probably where you live, uh, you know, taking a hop, skipping a jump over to New York isn't far at all. Uh, you can probably do everything from Connecticut and just do a bunch of trips into New York and meet as best as you can. So I hope that's a long answer to the question. Uh, and, and just so you guys know, be as specific as you can in your questions because then I can be as specific in the answers. Uh, Artemis Cole. Uh, when done with a short film, is it better to release online or submit to festivals? Uh, as the post suggests, I have a short film where I will be done with post-production the second or third week of February, and I've entered projects into film festivals and won awards in the past, but that didn't lead to anything from a big studio or network. So this time around, I'm strongly considering putting the finished movie on my YouTube channel and not even going the festival submission route and saving myself about $2,000 in fees. And this way, it will be available every day, all day, for anyone to see and contact me if they want to hire me or do work with me. Any thoughts from anyone as to whether this method is likely to garner more attention than a festival run? And yes, I do make quality films, so I'm covered in that department. Well, th th this is a a hard to say. I feel like film festivals curate and get the proper audience for your film so it gets seen by the people who actually matter and can take your career to the next level. YouTube is tougher because it has to go viral in some way. Just putting it up on YouTube doesn't get anybody's eyeballs directly to it unless you already have a massive YouTube following. And under that scenario, uh, not such a bad idea, but you're not going to make any money at it. If, you put, if you've spent money to make that short film and you want to get that money back, your better chance is going to the festivals where you can win a contest and get money or you can uh, get a producer to cut back your feature version of it and it starts leading to a career. Uh, you know, you're asking someone like me, who's a producer, to randomly find your YouTube channel and find that film. Unless it goes viral and somebody tells me about it, I'm never going to find that film. But yet I'm at these film festivals uh, meeting and looking and finding new talent. So that would be my answer to that. I can't pronounce this name, but I'm going to give it a shot. Aleha Amaro um, has a question. Hey, everyone, what is good? What is a good tactic or strategy or even just tips in general on finding, on finding investors and grabbing their attention for your production? I know a lot of investors ask for a return, but that isn't always something that can be promised. What are some ways of correctly approaching someone and what experience do you have in this field? Uh, I'm trying to understand the question. 
I know of a lot of investors ask for a return. What is a good tactic or strategy or even just tips in general on finding investors and grabbing their attention for your production? I mean, there is no investor who's going to be like, yeah, here's the money, no return on my investment. I mean, obviously they are aware of the risks of the film industry and they understand that they may not always get their money back, but they're still going to do a deal with you that if the movie works, they're going to get their money back plus 15 to 20% on that money. And then hopefully they'll have 50% or a little bit less of the back end. Uh, so in terms of approaching someone and finding them, you kind of got to know your stuff. You might want to read a book or two on what the investment deals are and kind of get understanding of industry speak. And then from there, you want to go to L.A., New York, film festivals, conferences, funding conferences, places like Nexus. Uh, or or even South by Southwest or just places where you can mingle with people who have money who may be looking uh, to invest in the industry or find ways to get lists of companies that already produce movies and or finance them and contact them vis-a-vis -vis, uh, email uh, or be aggressive. I mean, you just got to get in front of people. Next question. Landis, Landis Stokes. Question is... Casting can be stressful and or a lot of fun. I've only encountered a casting director once briefly, and it was during a film festival Q&A for a film we were competing against. I was a nervous wreck, and chatting up strangers was not on my mind. In hindsight, it was a missed opportunity to learn more about another profession. What is the casting director's process like? How does one get in touch with one and build a working relationship with a casting director? Okay, well, casting directors, I are... I am a huge fan. I think that they are super critical and important to the process. They have all the relationships with the agencies and the managers. They even have relationship directly with the talent. Um, so they can help change the game on your film by getting cast members attached, actors, writers sometimes attached to your films. And uh, that's a great thing. And yeah, they're at film festivals. Yeah, sometimes they're at those Q&As and you can go right up to them. Um, but they are also available on social media. I mean, I know for a fact that a lot of these casting directors either have their own profiles or their company name has a profile, and you can sort of follow them and find ways to connect to them. We never had social media when I was starting out. We used to get these books that had lists of casting directors and their addresses and try to write them letters and or emails if email was coming into the fray at that time. Um, so you can totally get to casting directors uh, through social media, through uh, finding those books, and, uh, and anyway, reading as many uh, trade magazines and publications like Hollywood Reporter and Variety, and when then they mention the casting directors, or they list them in Breakdown Services, which is another service you can probably find, uh, you will just have to research a little bit further than just, nobody's just going to hand you the answer. Here's the number of a casting director. That's not how it works. you got to dig deep, find who they are, look for, do the, the search the best you can and, or, you know, have cards at festivals and communicate and try to get their cards. So, but I do want to be a big proponent that casting directors are very helpful. Donalyn Vochuta. Wow, it's hard, man. Uh, how do I properly solicit a film director? I am at a point in early production where I have to start trying to get a great director attached. Needed in order to get funding that depends on a high caliber director. Can anyone tell me how a director expects to be properly and professionally solicited or courted? Please and thank you. I mean, if it's a great high caliber director, they're going to have an agent or a manager and you're going to have to go vet them and, you know, professionally court them through that. So if you, when you say you're in early production, you, you can't be in early production if you have, if you don't have a director. So you must mean you are in kind of a prep stage where you've created and found a script that you like, you're out trying to get investors or you have the investors. And now you want to go contact the agent or manager to these, uh, directors and or if you have a personal connection to the director or you can find a way to get to the director through social media, you have to get in front of that director or at a film festival and you catch them at a Q&A and you talk to them afterwards. And it's the same process. you got to try and get that director to read that screenplay, to be interested in your project. Or you try to find a producer who has a lot of street cred in the industry, 
get them to read your screenplay, love that, and then they can go to the agents and managers because they have relationships. Or you take the screenplay to a casting director, and that casting director helps connect you uh, to directors because they know directors because they work with those directors when they're casting the films. So there's a lot of avenues, but you got to get these people attached that help either a producer uh, or a casting director or a manager or agent that can get you there. That's the professional way to do it. Vasco Philip D. Sosa. Options, holding fees, and other down payments. Just hearing the word holding fees, fees means that you know your stuff, and that's good. If you can't afford to buy a script outright, but you want to reserve it while you're looking for funding, you put a down payment called an option. It's compensation for the writer to stop them from shopping the script elsewhere. It also helps investors know that the script is secure and that you have faith in it. Now, I hear in American TV to secure actors and locations for a second series, they have a holding fee. The holding fee means you have to pay something even if there isn't a second series. However, without the holding fee, it's harder to guarantee that you'll get the right locations and actors if there's a second series, and maybe the price will go up further. I sometimes try to work with people who have made short films and they don't always seem to understand these concepts. However, I'm aware there are more prepayments such as down payment to a composer or an editor. I'm also aware that in different countries we sometimes use different names. What kinds of down payment securities are you involved with? Have you found it different in different countries or from film to television? Wow. Uh, I'm trying to understand what you're really getting at. This question is a little bit confusing. Uh, well, we do options for sure. We grab, uh, you know, scripts and we option them or we do something called a shopping agreement where we can shop the script around and try to get a studio and or big production company or actors attached to this project where it's a period of time that we pay a little bit of money to go and shop it. That's one way. The option is you actually are buying time. So it's like 18 month option I now have full control of that script and I'm going out with that option to uh, get a studio to come on board in television, let's say. Uh, and if it's not a studio directly to the network, which the streamers are also networks. Um, a holding fee, I usually think of in regards to actors, right? Uh, like putting a holding fee down on an actor. It's like we're already on our way to making the film and or television show and we want the actor to lock in on the dates. So these dates are the dates we're going to be shooting, and you don't want them to go get another project in those dates. So you put a holding fee, you give them a certain amount of money, and that is a portion of their actual fee for the whole uh, project, and that holds them in for those dates. But in terms of... Uh, of holding fee on a script, I think you're probably talking about either a shopping agreement or an option. And I don't think in this country or even in other countries we do it any other way. Yeah, I can't really think about it other than buying outright the script itself uh, or paying somebody to write a script and, and paying. I mean, we have unions over here, so it follows the WGA. Anyway, I hope that helps. Um, so excited to be doing Dear Gallo and please, uh, submit your questions. And now that I've gone through this, submit the questions a little bit shorter so I can, uh, get to the questions, uh, faster. Thank you so much for your time and I'll talk to you guys soon.